Hi, I recently found this Eurorack cable tester uh, on Thwang while I was ordering other stuff. And we all know, well, maybe we all know the cable test on the right, which tests XLR, TRS, uh, Ethernet, Speakon, uh, whatever. But if you're into a lot of DIY, uh, it was really convenient to have a tester to test your flat cables. I make my own. And every time I do, I uh, use my multimeter to test the flat cable. And this is a little device. It comes as a kit and helps you to test your flat cables and also uh, patch cables. So everything is in the kit. Nicely packaged, nicely labeled. Sorted per component and component value. And I'm gonna show you the entire process of building the kit. It's really easy and it comes with a manual and it's all really self-explanatory. The only thing that's missing that's that's a power adapter. A bunch of LEDs. I always start with sorting everything. Check is if everything is there. Then I check the board for obvious defects. Because things can, can go wrong with the production of, of the board. Then I clean the board with some isopropyl alcohol. And I went to their website to find the, the build manual. It's not really necessary. And there's one service mount component in there. It's it's a relay. It's the white small box that's on the board right now in the middle. And uh, I built my own reflow oven. And I wanted to reflow because it's fun. Uh, but I had to make sure that uh, the component was actually capable of reflowing. And it probably is, but maybe there was a max temperature for the component that I couldn't exceed. So here I'm looking at the data sheet for the component, for the relay. And there's actually always some information for, for the reflow, how long it can stay in the oven and for uh, what, what maximum temperature. And you can see it on the left hand. And it's 250 degrees and my oven is set for 225. So I get some lead paste from the syringe and I'm actually all in the way <laughs> in my head uh, but I'll correct that later so I put some paste on the pads that's maybe six or eight You can do this by hand with the soldering iron. It's not that difficult. It's just that I like to do it this way. So you can see the paste. If it's in focus. You can see the paste on the pads. On K1. And I just put the relay on top of it. It doesn't have to be aligned. It, it will sort itself out in the oven. Uh, when the tin melts. When the paste melts. The surface tension will draw it for this. So we're actually seven minutes later now and it's reflowed. 
This is what it looks like. Sort of. <laughs> I do a visual inspection. But it was alright. You always start with the, the lowest components. And actually the relay is not the lowest component, but because it's servant's mount, you can... And I use the oven, I do it first. And I always test uh, resistors before I put them in the board. So I grab my multimeter. And on the back it says what it's supposed to be. And I check my meter to see if the component is really what it's supposed to be. And then you just put them in. Bend the leads. I try to orient them all in the same way. It's aesthetically, aesthetically pleasing. But it's also easier to troubleshoot. If you make a mistake later, you can recognize all the same components much faster. It's just a good habit to, to do. And I always solder first one side. And I flip it over, see if they're all flat. And only if they're, they're aligned nicely, I do the other side of each component. <coughs> then you take the snaps. You cut off all the legs. The one by one get much better result. I'm actually reading the manual or the build log, the build manual. It's just more resistors. I believe I actually made a mistake. Uh, I accidentally scrolled the manual way further down. You can see some components on the left, like the, the power transistor, the, the voltage regulator, I should say. Uh, because it's actually lower in profile than the LEDs are. Here you can see me correcting the LEDs. I did one side first, and then <coughs> they're obviously not, not straight on the board, so while I push him down, I heat the leg and then it snaps it snaps into place. It's time for the power connector. The legs are really big. I give it some time to, to properly heat because all the components that you want to solder have to be uh, at temperature so that the tin will adhere to all the surfaces. If one of the parts is not hot enough, it will only connect to one side, maybe the leg or the, the via in the board. For the shrouded headers I do the same first one corner 
then the opposite corner now I do the other connector and before I solder all the other pins I turn the board around and check if it's really flat look at it from all sides and if I like it then I solder all the other pins and that's just really repetitive stuff but I actually enjoy that quite a lot it's my form of meditation I guess There, I found out that I was actually <laughs> building in the wrong order. And since this is an active component, I wear my antistatic wrist wrap. It's probably not necessary, but better safe than sorry. And it's there. If you don't have anything like that, just uh, touch something big and metally in your house to discharge yourself from static electricity. Because in theory you can destroy the component with, with your own static electricity. These pads and these legs are quite chunky as well, so you have to apply the heat a little longer. Not too long, because if then you can destroy the component. And small current capacitors the regulator and I always test them this is a simple Banggood component tester but it actually works really nice it's only a couple of bucks one side first Here you can see I push it down further because it actually fell out a little. And now I do the other side. Trim the legs. The other capacitor. Now for the jack headers. These have a nice snap. They stay in. inspection
There you have it. That's all the soldering. They included some spaces to use as little standoffs. And I used the multimeter in continuous uh, continuity testing to see if I have any shorts between uh, plus and minus on the power jack. And this power jack has three pins, so there's probably there's also a switch inside. So two legs should be connected, probably, but the other two uh, not. And I found it to be exactly what it's supposed to be. And then I went to check uh, what the voltage was supposed to be for this device. And here it says anywhere, anywhere between 5 and 12 volts. Should do the trick. Center pin positive. So I found one. 9 volts. Center pin positive. Plug is actually not, not a really good fit. I'll try to find a better one later. There's no way you can tell it's on, but if you put in a jack, you see the two yellow LEDs. And if you push the button, you check the other lead. So it's the tip or the sleeve, the tip or the sleeve. And if you put in a flat cable, all the wires that are connected light up and you can do bottom row and top row and if you have a short you would see LEDs on the other side light up as well I also have a big cable with all the pins and you see also the orange LEDs light up. And this is way faster <laughs> to check flat cables. And you really want to be your flat cables to be uh, do not have any shorts because you can ruin any module that you connect to those flat cables. <laughs> 